Oh, look what Joe's been playing with again. It's as if he's no marking to do. This is so similar to our last lesson on road pricing. We learnt about why congestion is a problem. So you can see a big traffic jam here. And we learnt that negative externalities arise from congestion, so pollution and loss of output and productivity. So this guy could be on his way to work, but we're losing productivity because he can't get there because of the traffic jam. So one way to resolve this could be maybe to introduce road pricing. Because uh, the drivers are only paying their private costs. So they're ignoring the externalities like pollution, so that's air pollution, noise pollution. So if they actually have to pay to use the roads, then you'll be internalising the externalities. So then each driver is paying the full social cost of their journey. Uh, if they're paying a higher price, it might deter some drivers from using the road as well. So say this guy might decide to drive at another time, uh, this guy might take an alternate route, and this frees up space for other drivers. This redu Through reduced demand, there's also reduced congestion as well. So I, I think there's a diagram for this, but... I can't remember it. I mean, Pete was talking yeah, about Yeah, if it. only he was here right now. Hey, how you doing? I've Hi. just arrived in the room. Yeah, what, are we, what are we talking about? Oh, we've got a bit of road pricing here. I wonder if you could go through the diagram for it. Of course I can. Of course I can. And isn't it convenient that Danielle happens to be holding one here? <laughs> so we've got the, uh, the lines in black are the original situation. You've got supply equals marginal private cost and demand equals marginal social benefit. We've got a little bit of a problem there in that the road is over-consumed and that's why we've got the congestion. What we really want to do is to find a price that reflects the full social cost of the drivers making the journey. So you can see the green line in there that Danielle has put on. That's the charge and because it's a user charge, the user of the road, we assume that it shifts the supply curve to the left. So here we've got S plus charge and we've got a new equilibrium P1 Q1. That's a higher price and a lower quantity. So what have we done? Well, we've added in the external costs, so the driver is now paying not only their private costs, such as fuel, but the external costs. And thankfully, it's reduced the volume of traffic down from Q to Q1. So because of the higher price, as Patrick alluded to, some people have decided to leave their cars at home, and we've got less congestion. But I'm looking at that diagram and thinking, is it always that simple? Well, you've got to remember that it depends on the price elasticity of demand, Pete. Because let's say this guy's really, really got to go to work, he's still going to take his journey and the same here. So even though you've increased uh, yeah, the price of, of the journey, you're still going to have congestion on the roads. Uh, yes, yeah, there's something else which has been bugging me as well. Well, it also depends on the size of the tax. So the size of the road charge should equal the external cost, which would internalise the externality, but it's hard to get the right value. So if it's too high... People would just stop using the road altogether, so none of them would be here. They could all move to a different road, and the problem would just be there instead. Mm. But if it was too low, then it wouldn't make a difference at all, and there'd still be the same problem. One other thing that would make road pricing a lot more effective would, it, would be if it was hypothecated into something more like public transport and the train system, so more people would be inclined to use the trains uh, to free up road space um, to reduce congestion. I'll tell you what, you've really helped me there because uh, the diagram I was quite happy explaining but I just assumed that road pricing would work and I didn't see any flaws on it. Anyway, what are you lot doing in here? Anyway, this is Joe's train set and car set. Put them all back. Look, he's going to be back in in five minutes. He's going to go absolutely crazy if you've messed up any of those cars. So get it sorted now before he comes <laughs> Will back. Will do.